Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday evening, the 28th of February. I'm going to start off with asking you guys a couple questions. Someone tell me uh, how much, well, for the S&P, let's just do the SP. How'd the S&P do for February? How did the S&P do for February? And I'm looking for a dollar figure. I'm looking for a number. I'm looking for uh, a real percentage. I'm not looking for good, bad. How did the S&P 500 do for February? And the funny thing is, I should have this already, so I'm going to go to it. No one knows. No one's typing anything in. So that's kind of interesting because if you're going to be trading, you you got to be paying attention a little bit to what's happening. Uh, it was close to the bottom, so July 100 multiple twice the other week. There you go. Russ is going, whatever you said, close to the bottom. Well, it's pretty interesting because for the most part, we had it right up here at 14.389. We finished right here at 13.751, right? Would that be fair to call it? Anyone know how far down we are year to date? Considering we started up here 15. 700 ish down to 13. Mod says 10.4. It's pretty interesting because you've got to work your own numbers to a certain degree. I start off with CNBC, but some numbers aren't quite adding up. They're telling me. Year to date, we're down 8.23. One month, we're only down 1.31. Let's take a look. By the way, this is the this was the the Nasdaq. We should be doing the S&P 500. S&P 500. I see it closer to right there, which is your pivot point. 45.18, we finished at 43.73. So if I work my numbers, right? If I just take 45.18 minus 43.73, we were down 1.45 divided by 45.18. That tells me 3.2%. 3.2% working off of the real numbers. Yet, what do we see on SPX? One month, only down 1.31. Well, Kevin, they go by 30 days. So I only have 28. You actually have to start, you know right here because it's 30 days rolling kind of ridiculous right kind of ridiculous i see a 3.2 so once again i'm trying to tell people even if it's cnbc even if their numbers are right here Oh, we're only down 1.31%. You've got to do your own work. You know what really amazes me? Anyone know how far we were uh, up last year? What was last year up? What were the returns for 2021? What were the returns for... 2021, the S&P 500. I see some 20s. I was 
told what I was kind of going off of. I was told 26 point, let's put a point in here, 8%, right? That's what I saw on record. One year, year to date, don't add up. They don't add up. You've got to work your own numbers. You've got to spend the time for those of you that are trading. You've got to spend your time understanding what you don't understand. And you've got to truly work your numbers to see if the numbers that you see, even if it's from CNBC, if the numbers add up and make sense. Because sometimes they don't. One month is probably 30 days. So if you're looking at the SPX, you're going to look at, you know, hey, it was at 4,400 and change, 4,450. We're at 4,373. You think for February, month wasn't bad. It was only down 1%, 1 1.3. When reality, it's 3.2. It's 3.2%, and you've got to work your numbers to figure it out. Uh, someone asked me here recently, Kevin, why are you staying with your core holdings, right? Why are you saying, you know what? This is where I'm at. This is what I believe. This is my thought process. This is where I'm going to put my money. Well, part of it is because, yeah, we didn't beat the S&P by much, but we beat the S&P 500 today again. Beat it by what? 15 hundredths, a tenth and a half. Apple, Apple's a core holding. I believe Apple's going to continue to go higher throughout next year. Boeing. We've had Boeing over a three-year period come down. Can anyone tell me what's probably the main catalyst or two for Boeing to move higher? Trying to teach you guys, going to have you guys think for yourselves here, right? What is the main catalyst for Boeing to have Boeing move higher? Because it's important to understand if these are positions in your portfolio, right? You guys should understand what's going to move your portfolios higher. The travel industry back up and running, some more planes are bought. That is true. But there are two main catalysts that will outdo their orders. Their orders are already in place. And actually, one of these catalysts has a direct effect on those plane orders. Russ, getting back to normal after the pandemic, true, but I've got two other ones that are going to be even bigger than those two. Clearing the planes that keep crashing, well, they we only had two that crashed and the 737s are cleared, but you are correct, Mod. The modifications on the 787 and 777s those will increase profits dramatically because those are their two planes, the Dreamliner and the other one that have the biggest margin into it. So that is one of them. Getting those planes cleared, that increases their profit margin, increases planes they already have built to get out the door to receive revenue. And the second one, for those of you that may not know, oil, price of fuel. Price of fuel significantly increases the need for planes that are more fuel efficient, for planes that are smaller, uh, excuse me, lighter that'll move faster. Those are the two for Boeing. Bank of America, what can move Bank of America higher? Why would we still be in Bank of America that really, for a while there, only had 10% upside opportunity till it was fully fully valued. Any ideas? 
Interest rate hikes. Bingo. It's funny. Three of you. Interest rates going higher. Interest rate hikes. Higher interest. Perfect. How about Baidu? Man, this bugger's fallen from what? 360, 380. Why don't I find out where Baidu's fallen from? Probably don't have it listed here. But what's going to move Baidu? Earnings are tomorrow morning, by the way. <laughs> uh, absolutely love it. Uh, two of you just typed in China backing off my stock. China, uh, Chinese government backing off, back off my stock, and China regulations going back to normal. I love it. Disney, what's going to move Disney higher? I really want to be mean and just say California getting done with their mask mandate. <laughs> that is correct. But uh, yes, uh, Disney, more people going to parks. The cruise lines aren't that big mod, but uh, the movies, right? Ford, what's going to move Ford higher? It's down from 2587. What's going to move Ford higher from 1756? Chip shortage being fixed. I love it. Uh, electric vehicles rolling out. When the chips get rolling, chip supply. I think all of those are reasons. Let's talk about one that's really screwed up Facebook. What's going to move Facebook higher? <laughs> I hate Facebook. Facebook sucks. <laughs> I understand that, but what's going to move it higher? You know, you can make money off stocks you hate, off companies you hate. There you go. Uh, kind, yeah. Ma just said a feisty crowd, but before that, if Zuckerberg dies. <laughs> oh, okay. L let's talk Facebook a little bit. Two things will move Facebook. Actually, three. Number one, that they figure out kind of like, uh, I want to say SoftBank, Shopify, that they change their algorithm so they can still work within the Apple privacy, just like Shopify has figured out. Number two, they get the metaverse uh, up and running to the point where it's, uh, I don't want to say marketable, but where you can charge for it. And number three, Facebook still touches over 3 billion people. There's not a better advertising, and especially if you're going to go through WhatsApp or Instagram or all the stupid social medias that they own. I haven't even monetized a couple of them yet. Runway is unbelievable. JP Morgan is higher interest rates. Um, we'll see what else. Core Holdings. Uh, Under Armour. What's going to move Under Armour? Pretty specific. Their, uh, their products are made over in Asia. What's going to move Under Armour? Dave W. Uh, or David W. Correct. The damn California port's opening up. <laughs> Supply chains back to normal. Supply constraints going back to normal. Agreed. Visa, what's going to move Visa? Core holding that we hold in leaps. What's going to hold Visa? Yeah, more spending by consumers. Higher GDP, I like that. More people going into debt. More, you know what, that's a really interesting one. More people getting out of their house and buying like they used to. Mask mandates are coming off of California, New York. I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to see those things happen and probably happen in the near future. Unfortunately, and I'm just going to say for right now, we have a couple things that we need to take into consideration and if i was going to in some way shape or form 
just put them out there. We need to get over the war. March 16th rate hike and April 15th taxes deal. And it really comes down to, to this simple. Our war. Historically, geopolitical events have been short-lived. I actually asked Keeve, well, you've been through this. He's like, I haven't been through crap. I've never been through a war. I'm like, dude, what about Syria? Oh. Well, I guess I have. But it wasn't a real war, which was true. I don't know if you call this a real war yet. It's bigger than anything we've had since, geez, 100,000 troops. I don't know how far back. I don't know where we've put 100,000 troops. I kind of feel like we haven't had 100,000 troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. It should be relatively short-lived. I wonder how our market's going to react to a new month in March with new money coming into funds. I found this interesting. It's so weird how people talk out of both sides of their you-know-what. U.S. economy remains robust. Yet in their first paragraph, GDP is now 0.6 which is impressive considering the January headwind. Huh. Really? 0 0.6 is impressive? I don't get it. When they talk about our U.S. economy remains robust, I don't see it. The numbers don't show it. We have business inventories, but retail sales were higher over ridiculously dismal numbers from 2020 and when COVID really shut things down. Here we have someone, Jeffrey Soltz, investment strategist from ClearBridge Investments, that doesn't understand economic reports. Equity markets year-to-date decline is explained by a contraction in PE multiples. I disagree. That's reversed. The decline explains your P multiples. It's not the multiples that explain the decline. Impact of the Fed policy probably negligible. Do you realize we went from a 10% rate hike in March that we're going to raise a quarter point to a hundred percent that we're going to raise 50 basis points or a half a a half a percent, and then back down to a 10% raise of just a quarter point. I think the Fed cannot not raise interest rates. But there's only a 10% chance that that's going to happen in March. Maybe it's a 10% that they're going to do a 50 basis points. But either way, the rate hike is going to spook the market. I love the last one. Someone please tell me what rock this guy lives under. Core inflation not likely to rise significantly due to the situation. Unbelievable. And it's kind of what I, I'm just going to state what I said. That was my comment. Most recently, we're estimated to have gas average over $4 per gallon starting in April before the May summer rise. I don't get it. I don't get it. If you're really going to ask me, we should pull back to a 20% bear market level 
and then the later half of the year we get our rebound with that said that is excluding banks baidu and apple banks because they benefit from rising interest rates baidu because it's over in china Apple, because it doesn't need the money with higher interest rates, Apple in the past has done very well because of their cash or they just spend their money. I really enjoyed the big picture. The Federal Reserve is in a bad spot. <laughs> the Federal Reserve doesn't have any live ammunition to fire at the malevolent, malevolent economic forces. The Fed doesn't have any rate cut bullets in the chamber. All the Fed can do is fire blanks in the event there's a big economic shock. If they raise rates aggressively, the Fed could shoot itself in the foot. It's pretty interesting because they're still buying, what, $120 billion of treasuries? Let's face it. The Fed put is not there like it used to be. I love what it all means. The Fed needs to hope isn't faced with a big shock that destabilizes the financial system or the U.S. economy. Just as it hopes inflation pressures would prove to be transitory. <laughs> it certainly respond to such a shock that given what's given is how the market will respond to the Fed's response. The Fed would have to be remarkably creative with its policy approach to restore confidence. There's nothing Powell does that has restored confidence as he's been in place let alone restore confidence. The PC index or inflation index is up 6.1%, and it most likely will only get higher. What the Fed should be doing in this position, what I read to you, where we're at macro economy, micro economy, U.S. economy, this is really where the Fed could benefit by giving a quarter point interest rate cut. But because we didn't raise them four years ago and two years ago and six years ago and technically eight, nine, 10, 11, 10 years ago, the only thing we can keep doing is inflating our balance sheet, buying back more mortgage-backed reserves, we'd have no rates to cut. I would hope we learn from England a negative, a real negative interest rate will stop like pulling the emergency brake on the freeway. It will stop the U.S. economy. Pretty interesting as to a certain degree, we're at the market's mercy. We're at the market's mercy for what it's going to do in the next 60 days. How quickly will we resolve a conflict where Russia on Saturday said, hey, let's go to high alert for our our nuclear capabilities because dang it we got a hundred thousand troops and ukraine's kind of holding their own so let's go to a nuclear alert just so nato and the u.s doesn't get involved hey china you might want to support us Where's my little Chinese one? 
okay, we'll extend credit, we'll help you. But then they come out and say, just to let everyone know, Taiwan is not Ukraine. As Taiwan raises their alert level to high. Uh, I found it pretty interesting that the foreign ministry said on Wednesday, as the Taiwan president beefed up their militaries in response to everything, Taiwan is not Ukraine, said their foreign minister. Taiwan has always been an inalienable part of China. This is an indisputable legal and historical fact. Well, dang it if that doesn't seem exactly like what Putin is talking about. I am absolutely shocked. You can't tell me China's not just sitting back and waiting to find out what is really going to happen with Russia. It is beyond belief that someone is not able to link these two together. It absolutely shocks me where people see that we're at. But you've got to put two and two together to understand where things are at and what's going on. Let's take a look. Um, where will our market stand this week? I know it looks like we're bouncing, but we're still bearish on the Dow. I'm really paying attention to the S&P 500. I do see an opportunity for us to go higher, but we only have, geez, 4462 to 4373. What is that? 91 points to the upside, 2%. Before we run into the big 200 day, which is interesting because we get Ukraine put behind us and we could jump up to 4,700 pretty quickly. Uh, a couple of questions I missed. So, are the Fed going to continue the asset purchase? Yes, they are, but they should be taking some off slowly but surely. If they feel the need to raise an interest rate, which they feel the need to, so they're going to do both. They're going to tap the brakes on asset purchases and raise the interest rates. Kevin, so why? So I just ask. So why are you telling us this, right? Is that the way to say it, Dave? Uh, it comes back down to there is a time that things are going to come back. In fact, having the dogs of the Dow, some things and blue chips last year that didn't go, those are the ones that usually come back the next year historically with the vengeance. That's why I like where we're at for this group. We're in a position that we can make some really good money on thousands of shares that we've picked up through our our process of through our process of doing our collar trading. And it's kind of funny because two people said, uh, yes, I've seen you do this before after 2008. And remember the market came back from the Great Depression. I agree with both of those. So why am I letting you know? I'm giving you the information so you better understand what your money is doing for you. I think we'll have a problem. It really needs a, a war to be over or done with to break the two levels of support here and to fight a March interest rate hike. Don't forget in May, taxes. A lot of people right now, I notice are taking more money out of their accounts because they're paying a much higher tax bill. I had someone mention to me recently, We've never paid taxes. Well, if you have a lot of kids and you lose your tax, well, you lose half. We've already been paid half of your child tax credit. You're going to, uh, for all intents and purposes, you're losing a big portion of maybe one of your write-offs 
on your taxes. Well, Kevin, you have home interest, and I mean, there are other taxes. There are other write-offs, excuse me, that you could be writing off. But yes, didn't you guys know you were supposed to save that money to pay your taxes when they came up? Well, Kevin, I thought that stimulus was to get us by, to spend, that we needed the extra money. Well, it was that too. <laughs> Now I'm starting to sound like a politician, aren't I? It can't be both. And a lot of people are finding out just how hard it, and how big their tax bill is going to be, which means the end of March will probably have a pretty good tax sell-off as people are pulling money out of funds that first quarter to pay taxes. And it usually happens uh, two to four weeks before that tax bill is due. So looking at the S&P 500, where would you say we're going to end March? Our lows have been 41.14. The 200 days at 44.62. Our center pivot point is at 45.18. The 50 day is at 45.52. Big resistance at 4,700. All time highs at 48.18.62. Where are we going to end March? We've got what, 20, 34 of us here. I am really getting popular. Give me a number. Where are we going to end March? It's kind of funny. I got to read a couple of these. Never believe the government, especially when they say they're giving you something. My taxes suck. I should not have listened to the government. Uh, March depends on Ukraine and Russia. It's a crapshoot. I don't know. Let me check my crystal ball. Kevin, why don't you tell us? <laughs> You guys are killing me. I don't know any better than you guys do. All I do is I spend a lot of time, like last night, up every two hours checking the markets. Hey, Asia didn't look that bad. But Europe ends up being down 2% plus. U.S. came back pretty good. Gives me a little hope for tomorrow. How come no one's typing a number in? Where are we going to end March? You see those numbers, 41.14 for the lows. We've got uh, 44.62 is the 200 day. 45.18 is the center pivot point. 45.52 is the 50 day. 4,700 is big resistance. 48.18 are the all time highs. Someone tell me, where do you think we're going to end March? Starts tomorrow, by the way. I'm kind of shocked no one's typing anything. There we go. Kevin, I'm going to go with the lows at 41.14. I think 41.14 is not a bad number. I might lean towards those as well. Jim Kohler, love it. There, here's someone's putting it out there. 4,600. That's not even a number I mentioned, but he's picking the lower end. But we do get above the 200, the pivot point, and the 50 day simple moving average. So, Jim, credit to you to go out on a limb and say, hey, we get through Ukraine, we go higher than that. It's kind of funny because if you ask me, I think we could travel all the way up to 4,700 and then get our rate hike and our taxes and come all the way back down to the 4,200, the 4,114. So I kind of believe in both of you. Steve and I are spending a lot of time to get ready to protect at highs, to maybe protect and take it off after a day to see if maybe we break 
a 200 day simple moving average supposed to be pretty difficult to do we couldn't do it there in the middle of february and it caused us to go down and test the lows would have to be a pretty significant event to do that all right and obviously the nasdaq also looks awful it was down as much as 17 percent from the highs um just got his death cross and boy it might have already lost eight and a half percent when you have the 50 day cross below the 200 day from that date you're expecting literally an eight and a half to 12 percent downside from right there still bearish nothing to look at nothing to think we're going bullish yet um I kind of starting with a 2% down March because I'm not sure how we overcome Ukraine, tax selling, and a rate hike. Earnings this week, uh, Triple D, Hewlett Packard, Groupon, Zoom, which didn't do very good at all, but Workday knocked it out of the park. Tomorrow we have AutoZone. That'll tell us a lot about consumer confidence in our spending. This is also the second week of the three week retails so we have uh, domino's pizza kohler's wendy's amc first solar nordstrom ross stores uh, salesforce buy you and target tuesday is loaded with earnings wednesday dollar tree amercombie and finch uh, american eagle outfitters snow snowflake what a name of a company Thursday, Best Buy, Big Lots, Burlington, Kroger, uh, AVGO is Broadcom, Gap, Marvel, Costco, and Smith and Mess Smith and Wesson. Economic support: We had the Chicago PMI supposed to be at a 62. It was all the way down to a multi-year low of 56.3, but anything above 50 is showing growth. Construction spending, I said manufacturing tomorrow. That'll most likely run our, our uh, what am I trying to say? Our futures will be run off of that. ADP on Wednesday, which has been horribly off from the non-farm payroll, even though they made some changes to make it better. Initial claims, the ISM services index, that is also called the ISM non-manufacturing. But service index productivity and factory orders will run our futures on Thursday if we're not saying we're going to nuke Ukraine. And Friday, the average work week with the non farm payrolls, the private payrolls. Uh, how am I looking to trade? It's kind of interesting because we do have long put protection, except for Apple, Under Armour, and Bank of America right now. We pulled those off last week, last Friday morning. And yes, we are looking for short term 30 days or less covered calls for a little credit. Little better credit than last year, right? But for some type of credit to help make out some of the down days and to take advantage of these big swings. All right, let's see what else I have for you. I have China says Taiwan is not Ukraine. Do enjoy reading through this one. Uh, I really, man alive, I, I was going through that and I just giggled at what was being said because the contradictions again it's just like you want to say, really? Really? Uh, I do have an article here about Warren Buffett annual letter calls Apple one of the four pillars or giants that are driving Berkshire Hathaway's value. We have a lot of Apple in people's accounts. Just to see how it's affected uh, Warren Buffett, don't hesitate to kind of look through here and uh, see what he's been doing don't forget that he's had to sell some shares 
so that it doesn't get over a quarter of his business. We might see Apple capped a little bit as, as it keeps growing, he's got to sell some of his shares off to not be so overweighted or over leveraged in Apple. Um, some of you have asked me a couple times for your own trading, how do you stop overthinking? And I think I do this when I talk to you. I think I do this when I uh, I do my webinars here. Positive reframing. I'm looking at the positive side, not being unrealistic. It's not like I've got to make crap up for why I'm doing certain things. But it's positive framing of the, the opportunities we have in front of us versus looking at the past performance. Uh, I do, I write down my thoughts, I write them down all the time. I don't necessarily distract myself for hours, but I still carry around those little yellow, I guess they're not yellow, but they're, they're notepads, the yellow notepads where you just rip off the paper in eight and a half by 11. And as I hear things, as I see things, I write them down. And some of the things that really piss me off or frustrate me, um, I push off to the side, but I, I make sure that I get through these notepads and I kind of like I did my, all my research for the companies we should be in. I go through those all the time to make sure I've got all my questions answered because if I have that question, you guys are gonna have those questions. And again, practice specific gratitude. If I don't tell you guys enough how thankful I am that I get to have you as clients and that uh, I get to do what I get to do for not only my money, and not only key for his mind, but we get to do it for you guys. Um, I need to start saying it a little more often. I am grateful for the clientele that I have that stuck with me for so long so that I can produce the results that you guys have seen over all these years. I know last year, kind of rough. I know some people that we picked up that we went right into Baidu and Boeing up at some highs. I know it's kind of rough, but stick with it i promise you it's well worth it and then i found a last one that i found really interesting what do they know high investors head for the hills for pharma stocks as they're cratering uh some people have asked me about why i don't trade pharma biopharma pharma stocks in general in fact there's one doctor that's talked me into doing ibb for him but the reality is the pharma stocks look awful right now and if you look at the money flows they have had some pretty big money flows out of the pharmaceuticals that are just huge and i didn't have an answer for it in fact it, it made me worry but again i'm like well I, i'm not sure how to answer it so it took me a while to get it, to understand it, to see it. We follow the IBB biotechnology. Um, I kind of relate it to biopharma. But the short answer is huge money has been moving out of this area. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's like if you're an intuitive surgical, you should watch out. But mom, come and you come with more money and hospitals are opening up. Right now, there's a shift out of healthcare, out of pharmaceuticals, out of biopharma, biotechnology as well. There's just a run away from those sectors at this time. As I went through some of this, I jumped on board. The bigger investors are pulling out of healthcare, biopharma, biotechnology, they think that we're through the pandemic where the easy money has been earned. Uh, I made the question, I'm like, well, that means more elective surgery. Something like intuitive surgical should do pretty well. Cardinal Health should finally do really well. United Healthcare should do really well. Some of these big names I followed. Money keeps coming out. So even if they should do well, the big money hasn't bought in. Big money's not there. Just pay attention to where big money heads to. 
I, it wouldn't surprise me to see that money fall back into technology. In fact, there are some pretty big technology calls today on how technology or the NASDAQ can go 40% uh, higher from where it's at right now. With that said, any questions you guys have that I can answer for you? <laughs> what is Kathy Woods doing? Well, Bill, pretty interesting uh, because you know a little bit more between me and Kathy Woods and how we're not the best of friends, but do you know there's a, a purchase of warrants to the tune of $110 billion, billion $110 million that someone has the ability to purchase shares of Baidu? Uh, I'm going to make a general assumption that those are at that price of about 135. So if we do a 110 million divided by 135, that's 814,000 shares, probably 815,000 shares that a single individual has the ability to purchase at Baidu. And again, it looks like those are probably given out at that 135, maybe 125 level. If we take them at 125, that means 880,000, which is a nice round number. It was probably at 125. Now remember, there are some treasury stocks, but a warrant acts like a stock purchase. Someone's giving up a stock and it looks as a purchase and uh, pretty interesting if we could have an 880 stock, 880,000 stock purchase price on Baidu, volume 3.4 million today. That can't be right. It's got a little more volume than that. Short float at 2.62%. Volume is really 3.3. Wow. 180 million. I'm going to do 3.5. 180,000, excuse me, divided by, well, oh, there it is, 3.5. So that's a quarter day's worth of volume that they could purchase all at once. Not quite as big as I thought, but still, that's a, that's a definite start to a trend. That could be what moves us above the 200-day simple moving average. Earnings tomorrow could move us up there as well. One, two, three. It'll be interesting to see where we end up. Uh, are there any other questions you guys have? And Dr. Gupta, I'm going to give you a call in about 10 minutes when we're done here. Why do you think Microsoft can't get over 300 now at 299? Um, the short answer is because they had such the run up. And again, as I look at Microsoft, I would say that their numbers are still coming from software. I know they have some cloud, but Again, my thought is I wouldn't expect to see Microsoft above 300. In fact, I think it'll, well, I, the numbers don't add up for me. I don't see the numbers. I don't see it adding up. Uh, I don't see the growth drivers uh, for the company where it's currently priced at. I just don't see it. Numbers don't add up. If you take those same numbers, you know, Apple should be at $800 a share. Uh, what about Berkshire Hathaway B? It's expensive. <laughs> B, R, K, B, is that going to get it to me? I like Buffett. As Apple goes, so will Bo. Um, I don't know in his conglomerate of insurance if if it's going to get hit with the Ukraine. I, I kind of wouldn't think so, but uh, the BRKB shares, 
give everyday people an opportunity to participate in what Warren Buffett's doing. And obviously, I'd like to think I'm better than he is, but I'm not. It's a great investment. A great investment to follow Buffett uh, could definitely be uh, the BRKB shares. But for the most part, I really haven't gone through it. Yeah, he insured vodka, huh? Well, weren't people pouring vodka down the drain thinking that was going to really hurt Russia? I just know it's a, a relatively cheap way to follow Buffett. Are there any other questions I can answer for you guys? Or at least try to answer for you. If not, hey, our biggest group yet. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you very much. I will get this posted most likely tomorrow afternoon. I know I'm busy. I know Dave's busy. We'll see what we can do to get this posted as quickly as possible. Um, guys, thank you for being here tonight. Have a good evening. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday, and I'll talk with you then. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.